Similar to prisms and cylinders, a question will sometimes provide the volume of a solid and ask for the length of an unknown side. Remember to set up the volume problem as an algebraic equation. Simplify one or both sides if possible, and then use inverse operations to find the length of the unknown side. And here's an example. If the volume of a sphere is 36 pi cubic units, then its radius is what value? Well, we know that the volume of a sphere can be calculated using the formula 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. We know that the volume is 36 pi, so let's substitute it in for the V for volume. And then we still have 4 thirds pi r cubed. In order to get rid of the fraction 4 pi over 3, we have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 3 over 4 times pi. And when we do that on the left-hand side, this 36 pi is over 1. So we actually have pi values that cancel each other out. So we're doing 3 fourths of 36, which is 27, to get what the radius cubed is. And then if we cube root both sides, we find that the radius is equal to the cubed root of 27, which is 3. So the radius is three units long. Here's another example problem. The volume of a square-based pyramid is 96 cubic meters. Determine the side length of the square base. So we know that the volume of any pyramid is one-third times the area of the base times the height. Well, we know that in this problem, we have a square base area. So the area of this base is gonna be x squared. So let's substitute x squared into our problem. And when we do that, we will get that the volume is equal to 1 3rd times x squared times the height. Now let's substitute in the values that we know. We know that the volume is 96 cubic meters. So let's substitute 96 in for v. And that's equal to 1 3rd we don't know the side length, so x squared remains, but the height is 8. If we put 8 over 1, we can multiply it by the 1 third. And when we do that, we will get 8 thirds. x squared is equal to 96. And now to solve for x squared, we're going to have to multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal of 8 thirds, which is 3 eighths. And we can put 96 over 1. We know that these cancel each other out on the right-hand side. So we have x squared remaining. And then 8 can go into 96 12 times. So the 8 becomes a 1 and the 96 becomes a 12. And if we multiply 3 times 12, we get 36. So the area of our base is 36 and the side lengths are x. So if we square root both sides we, to get x by itself, we have either positive or negative 6. But since this is a three-dimensional solid and the side lengths must be positive numbers, we only include the positive 6 meters in our final answer. So the value of x is 6 meters. And here's the solution to our example problem. We do substitute 96 cubic meters in for volume and 8 in for the height of our pyramid. And we have x squared for the area of the base. And then if we multiply 8 times 1 third, we get 8 thirds. So we have 8 thirds x squared is equal to 96. And if we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 8 thirds, which is 3 eighths, the fraction goes away and we have x squared remaining on the right and 3 eighths of 96 is 36 and then if we square root 36 we get 6 meters as the value of x and remember because we are finding size length measurements we can rule out the possibility that the value of x is negative 6 because it's not possible. So the answer here is six meters. Let's try this problem. The volume of a cone is 623 
and 133 thousandths cubic centimeters. Determine the height of the cone and use 3 and 14 hundredths as the value of pi. All right, so we know that the volume of any cone is equal to the volume of any pyramid, which is one third times the area of the base times the height. Well, because our base is a circle, the area of that base is equal to pi times the radius squared. So we can substitute these values in for the area of our base. So we still have one third times pi times the radius squared times the height. So now let's substitute in the values that we know. We know that the volume is 623 and 133 thousandths, and that's equal to one third. It says use three and 14 hundredths as the value of pi. And we know that the diameter is 12 and 6 tenths centimeters. So then the radius is gonna be half of this value. So half of 12 and 6 tenths is 6 and 3 tenths. So 6 and 3 tenths squared times the height, which is the unknown part. So we're still going to have 623 and 133 thousandths for the volume. And let's actually simplify or evaluate the expression that we have here before h. So that will be one third times three and fourteen hundredths times six and three tenths squared. And when we evaluate this, we get 41 and let's round it to the hundredths place. So 41 and 54 hundredths. 41 and 54 hundredths times h. So then if we divide both sides by 41 and 54 hundredths, we get that the height of our cone is equal to 50, and if we round this value to the nearest hundredth again, we get that the value of the height is 15 centimeters. And here's the solution to this example problem. And we did get the same value for the height of 15 centimeters.